The issue that I have with Bruno Fernandes in Ten Hag's current Manchester United system is I think he's being considered more as a midfielder, whereas I think in order to get the best out of him he needs to be considered a forward. And what I mean by this is that he can't play in a midfield three. I think that he needs to play in the front three, but not on the right side as many of you may think, and obviously not as a traditional centre forward either. I would deploy him kind of like a false nine, but with Rasmus Hoyland from the right and Rashford from the left, being used more as wide forwards and wingers. Think Salah and Mane rather than Sterling and Sane. And so this means that in possession Bruno Fernandes will initially start as a centre forward, before then dropping off from the centre backs and looking to pick up space in behind the opposition's midfield, giving Ten Hag a front three that's closer to Jurgen Klopp's prime Liverpool side rather than Pep's current City side. But how exactly will this get the best out of Bruno Fernandes? But before I go any further, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon podcast which will be linked below. But also if you want cheap good quality football jerseys for the new season or retro jerseys from the past 40 years, then check out jerseyfever.com, a link will be in my Instagram bio and if you use coupon code Atlantis you should get a discount as well. I'll leave my Instagram at the top of the description and comment section and a link will be in my Instagram bio. So using Bruno Fernandes in this role would essentially give United a system that resembles a 4-4-2 diamond in position. I would use Amrabat as a deep single pivot, dropping deep to receive the ball with his back to goal as I think he's the most press resistant of all United's current midfielders. And the arrival of Amrabat would also allow me to use Casemiro in a wider position sitting in a higher position during the build-up phase which I do think suits his game and the Brazilian could be used on the left side of the diamond and someone like Mason Mount or maybe Dalot until Mount returns from injury playing on the right. But the reason I think this midfield setup gets the best out of Bruno Fernandes is because it puts him in the areas where he's most effective. When you're in possession, you don't really want Bruno Fernandes picking up the ball in front of the opposition's midfield line. He does have a decent passing range and can switch play, but because of his tendency to always look for the killer pass, he can give away the ball unnecessarily, which isn't something you want in one of your deeper line midfielders. If you look at Christian Eriksen on the contrary, he is much more effective at circulating possession, controlling the tempo and giving United sustained attacks. Bruno Fernandes on the other hand is better when he's receiving the ball in behind the opposition's midfield line and he's got space to either drive forward or look for a killer through ball for one of Rashford or Hoyland to run onto. And if you think back to when Bruno Fernandes is at his best, it's when United are transitioning the attack quickly and someone like Christian Eriksen is playing a pass from deep into Bruno Fernandes in behind the opposition's midfield line and with Bruno Fernandes' vision and passing ability and both Hoyland and Rashford's movement and pace in behind it seems like this attacking method gets the best out of not just United's best creator in Bruno Fernandes but also Ten Hag's two best goal scorers in Hoyland and Rashford but also from a defensive point of view I think this system suits Fernandes as well Fernandez's main strength out of possession is his pressing ability, his ability to press from the front, having the intelligence and intensity in his pressing that neither Ericsson or Sancho have. But whilst he's an excellent presser in the final third, making him the perfect presser to have in your forward line, I definitely don't think he's well suited to breaking up the play in the middle of the pitch, because let's be real, his 1v1 defending as well as his defensive positioning does leave a lot to be desired for. And so essentially by sacrificing a pressing player in the forward line, reducing it from 4 to 3, you now gain an extra one in the midfield line. And I think this gives United and Bruno Fernandes a lot more stability, allowing Fernandes to push further forward in the final third and get into positions where he can create and score goals himself, knowing that he has an extra central midfielder in behind him in case the opposition win possession and look to counter quickly through the centre of the pitch, a situation that has exposed United multiple times at the start of this season. And just imagine the defensive stability behind Bruno Fernandes if you had Amrabat as a single pivot, Casemiro to his left and maybe someone like Dalot to his right or Mason Mount when he returns from injury. Now some may raise their eyebrows at Dalot playing in central midfield but he's really playing as more of a conservative wide midfielder in a diamond. If you're familiar with football manager kind of like the Carolero role. Someone whose job it is to progress the ball from the build up into the middle third and then from the middle to the final third, but not really someone who's going to be a creator or a goal threat in the final third, instead they're going to look to sit behind the ball and basically be like a wide defensive midfielder, ready to shuttle out to the flanks to close down the space vacated by United's fullbacks, who will be asked to hold high and wide positions in possession, allowing Hoyland and Rashford to move in field. And so let's say you have Sergio Regalon and wan as the two fullbacks, they push further forward allowing Rashford and Hoyland to move into more central positions, with Fernandes playing between the lines, and then you've got Amrabat sitting in front of a back two of Lissandro Martinez and Lindelof, with Dalot and Casemiro essentially playing like temporary fullbacks. And I think this 2-3 rest defence when United have possession will do a lot to stop United being so open in the centre of the pitch. 
Right now with both fullbacks holding fairly wide positions in possession, and Eriksen and Fernandes not exactly the type of destructive midfielders that can break up the opposition's counter-attacks, United's whole defence against the opposition transitioning the attack quickly through the centre of the pitch basically just comes down to Casemiro. However, with Dalot and Amrabat holding a deeper position alongside him, you've now got two players who, unlike Eriksen or Fernandes, who have the legs and tackling ability to defend in these large spaces. Now, I will admit that there are some pitfalls in this system. First of all, the question is, how will United cope with the reduced width in the attack? And if it is the fullbacks who have to push further forward and provide the width in the system, are they good enough in attacking positions? Well, if we look at United's usual starting fullbacks of Luke Shaw and Aaron Wambasaka, I think you'd have to say no. As both Wambasaka and Shaw are fullbacks who are better in deeper positions rather than pushing forward and looking to beat their man in 1v1s. However, I think the arrival of Sergio Regalon actually makes his system a lot more appealing because he's got the ability to overlap Rashford on the left side. And whereas Rashford is usually coming inside looking to play a pass or release a shot with his right foot, the Spaniard will provide the necessary balance in the system, sitting slightly wider and providing those overlapping runs, looking to put low crosses across the box, which should definitely suit someone like Rasmus Hoyland or cutting them back to the edge of the box, which will suit Bruno Fernandes. But I think Ten Hag can also use his system to get the best out of both Hoyland and Rashford, and he can do this by implementing a more direct game from build-up. Whilst United have certainly improved their ability to play out from the back under pressure from last season, against the best pressing sides it can be a dangerous tactic. And if you actually look at United in build-up, you'll see that a lot of their strengths come from the goalkeeper and the two centre-backs. I'm never really comfortable with seeing any of United's fullbacks play out under pressure, and I think you could put Casemiro in that category as well. And so because I think that Lissandro Martinez and Andre Onana's long passing ability is significantly better than either of the fullbacks or Casemiro's ability to play out under pressure, why not essentially just look to take advantage of the opposition's high press? Having the midfield three of Amrabat, Casemiro and Dalot dropping into the defensive third and leaving the front three high and wide on the halfway line. United can initially look to draw the high press on by playing a few short passes inside their own box. Before Bruno Fernandes can make a move dropping off from the forward line, lightly dragging a centre back with him, and now you've got a situation where both Rashford and Hoyland can isolate their full backs on either side, and with the passing ability of Onana and Lissandro Martinez, you've got two players who can ping these passes into their chest or feet, and whilst this is a part of Rashford's game that he does need to develop, I think Rasmus Hoyland has already showed in his Arsenal debut that he's more than capable of holding off defenders and receiving long balls to his feet and chest. And because the opposition will have committed so many players forward to their man to man high press, both Hoyland and Rashford have the spaces to make runs in behind the opposition back line, from where either one of them or Bruno Fernandes behind can look for that killer through ball, which you'd have to say is probably United's best method of creating high value chances. Now we'll do a separate video going into this tactic in a bit more detail, but hopefully now you understand why I think Bruno Fernandes, and not just Bruno Fernandes, but other players around him, would probably benefit from using this diamond system, not just in attacking situations, but also because of the added defensive security it provides as well. So let me know what you think of the diamond system in the comment section below.